Hello Booktube. I'm going to give this another try, continuing with this library tour of mine. I haven't been very successful making this video, but who knows, it might work this time. Uh, we are down on the bottom shelf of this tall, thin bookcase. So if we can get through this video, if I can get through this video, then uh, we will have finished this at least one bookcase in this little book room. Uh, so the first one we've got, a lot of these are oversized. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is this is a, a classic. Uh, I had it when it first came out, and uh, didn't keep it. So I'm very I'm very happy to have it again. I found it I think just recently uh, at the Brattle. This is a big picture book called At Home with Books, and it's uh, none of the places that are uh, <coughs> none of the places that are photographed in here are particularly homey. Uh, they don't look anything like. The, like a normal person's home with books. They look, uh, they're extremely boutique style, style things. They aren't, they aren't, uh, there was, I could swear I remember, there was a big picture book. Sorry for the holy nimbus of light. I, I'm I just, just a general blanket apologies for this channel all around. I cannot escape the holy nimbus of light. I cannot do it. It is dark outside right now. It is dark outside. Not a little bit dim, not cloudy in the middle of an afternoon. It's dark outside. It would be difficult even for me to read words on the page right now. <clears throat> and look at that. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense at all. And that is true no matter what. It looks like that when it's brilliant bright light out. It, it looks like that when it's a normal cloudy, semi-cloudy day. And it looks like that now when it's dark outside. So I have to apologize for the holy nimbus of light. And I also have to apologize for being sick going on a week now. I'm not in any sense of the word recovering, so I imagine that the <clears throat> holiness of blinding light will be in every video that I make from now on, and I will also feel like dog crap in every video that I make from now on. Uh, as long as I don't start a massive coughing fit, that'd be fine by me. But there is a book, I, f I feel certain, maybe one of you can tell me, there is a book. See, I'm actually blocking of the source of that light, and it's blasting right through. The nimbus of light is showing through the book. It's so strong. No idea why. Uh, <clears throat> but I could swear I remember a big picture book like this uh, of actual people's actual home libraries. Maybe one of you will maybe know what I'm talking about and be able to remind me of it, or maybe tell me that I'm wrong, that, it, that such a thing did not exist. I could swear I remember such a thing. Not country houses or, you know, uh, New York, Upper, Fifth, Upper West Side brownstones, but actual ordinary people, their, their actual ordinary libraries. If there isn't such a book, <clears throat> I'd love it if there was one, as those fascinate me. Uh, what have we got here? These are Oh, these are of a pair. Okay. This is an illustrator named Ralph Ray. He did three books, I think, and I have two of them here. There, he was a uh, nature illustrator. This is The Ruffled Grouse, his book on The Ruffled Grouse. Uh, and this is uh, his book on woodcocks. And they have uh, just his... They're, they're filled with his beautiful, uh, gentle spot illustrations and also color illustrations. Can I find a colored one? Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, you can't really make it out because of the Holy Nimbus of Light, but, uh, but he was <clears throat> a terrific nature illustrator. And, uh, I got these at the Brattle Bookshop in Boston and, uh, I've mentioned before the Brattle Bookshop. I don't imagine that I will ever go there again. I, I very seldom leave my bed now. Uh, but once upon a time I went there and uh, I mentioned that they, there's a sort of a synchronicity at their outdoor sale carts. You can't force them. But if you see Woodcock Ways by Ralph Ray, uh, chances are you will see another Ray book. These both have library uh, jackets on them. If the Brattle didn't do that, then their owner did. And I have to think that when these two were there, somewhere around there, somewhere, you know, two days later, two days earlier, there would have been The Others by Ralph Ray, the one other book that I know of, uh, and I must have just missed it. Uh, <clears throat> uh, what is this next? Oh, okay. We saw this already. I, I got this, I believe, at a Brattle, uh, at the Brattle, and uh, moved it here into this room right away. This is, this is, there's no contest here. In fact, the only problem, the only question that I have is why the other book, My Best Girls, is out in the other room somewhere. It should be in here. I'll have to fix that or have my heirs do it. Uh, 
This is uh, the Hokanson Festival. This is Helen Hokanson, a New Yorker cartoonist uh, <clears throat> of a bygone era whose specialty was uh, plump New York matrons. <laughs> plump and endearingly clueless, over money New York matrons who are constantly saying charming, inappropriate things. Uh, I just love them. I think it, it's just a perfect, perfect comedic world that Helen Hokanson created and then excavated for years uh, until she died in a tragic plane crash, or who knows how many more years of her best girls we'd have had. Uh, but I have a, I have another Helen Hokanson book, and it's not in this room, so I need to I need to fix that. Ah, uh, uh, okay. All right, this is uh, Cosmos by Carl Sagan. Some of you of a certain age will know <clears throat> the miniseries that he did. This book was the companion to his miniseries. Uh, it'd be nice if the miniseries were were on Netflix or were in rebroadcast sometime soon. That would be great. Uh, but I know that uh, Sagan has some fans left in 2019, and I think that his efficient his aficionados would say that uh, The Dragons of Eden or Broca's Brain is his best book. I think this is his best book. Chock full of wonder uh, and also beautifully illustrated just from beginning to end. Uh, I have... It's a little bit... <clears throat> see, you've got color plates all through this. It's a little bit uh, bittersweet in a way to look through this thing and see... Uh, how far the science has left it behind. Uh, and that's bittersweet not because it outdates the book, because the book is full of wonder and curiosity and those things don't don't get dated. But rather, it's bittersweet because Sagan would have loved seeing all that. It's, it's the one thing I can't stand about death uh, is that people who are, who are genuinely uh, just avidly curious about their subject or X number of subjects don't get to know the latest. They don't ever get to see it. They miss out. They just plain miss out. And that's, they can cover the whole history of their enthusiasm up until the moment they die. But then the enthusiasm goes on and you, 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 you don't <clears throat> get to pass word along to them and they don't ever know. It's a, it's a, it's bittersweet to think of all of these exoplanets popping up, uh, the uh, space stations and NASA discovering one uh, Earth-type planet after another in far distant solar systems, and having this you know scientific confirmation of what their atmospheric composition is like, probably what their uh, mineral composition is like, and Carl Sagan's not here for it. <laughs> And he should be. So that's a that's a little a little bittersweet. Uh, oh, okay. This is Norman Thewell. This is a plank bridge by a pool. An utterly charming book of his on rehabilitating uh, a country property. Uh, the main thing that I love about it is the the uh, spot illustrations all throughout are are tremendously enjoyable. This is. Uh, Look at that. It's just they're just everywhere. The book is just full of them, and it's it's full of neat anecdotes too. What it what it takes to reclaim a, a country property and make it work, make it work as a country property. Uh, it's not all uh, John Clare poetry. It's, it's a, there's a lot of practicality involved as well. And he can, the author captures that really well. Uh, this next one is a box. Uh, Oh, oh, fantastic. Okay, I mentioned this already. I didn't mention this particular thing, uh, but I have mentioned on almost every shelf of this library tour uh, that National Geographic used to make books, and they were wonderful. They were a great combination of uh, the latest popular science writers weighing in on whatever subject, the latest popular historians weighing in on whatever the subject was, also the, the gorgeous photography that you expect of National Geographic, and also uh, original illustrations in color and black and white. They were wonderful. I don't know why National Geographic has stopped really doing books like that. They do opulent picture books now, but they don't, they don't do anything along the lines of these. This is a, a box set 
of birds. You have song and garden birds of North America and water prey and game birds of North America in two volumes. Uh, and I, I have, uh, I have quite a few bird books, uh, but I've gotten rid of, yeah, look at that. Incredible. Amazing. Uh, I've got rid of quite a few bird books too. I, well, I, I periodically I look at my collection of them and I say, "Well, okay, you enjoyed this, but do you ever really look at it?" Uh, and these things uh, pass that exam all the time. I do. I do really look at them. I love them. I love. I love just losing an hour in one of those National Geographic bird books. Yeah. Okay. All right. This is. Uh, <clears throat> This is another thing that we've seen in, in this library tour. I don't know if we've seen it uh, recently, but these are... I am a huge, huge fan of New Yorker cartoons. Not just some particular cartoonist, like Gullius Williams or Helen Hokanson, but New Yorker cartoons just in general as a phenomenon. I'm a huge fan of them. I think they were the emojis before emojis came along. I believe uh, that there is a New Yorker cartoon that per can perfectly summarize any moment, any life twist or turn uh, that you can have. I, and, and I know New Yorker cartoons now backwards and forwards. I've spent so many so many hours just absorbed in the big collected volumes like this. Just absorbed in them. Uh, that it often happens to me that something, something will occur in the course of a day and the first thing I will think of is the New Yorker cartoon that perfectly summarizes it. Uh, just you spend too much time with New Yorker cartoons. That's what's going to happen to you. Uh, so this is just one. This is just one of these collections. I I have lots of others. We saw them earlier in this library tour in the other room. I I don't quite know why they aren't all together. They they probably should be. But uh, I'm glad I have at least one in this room. Uh, and then we'll do this last one, and I I will collapse on the bed for 16 hours in a fetal position. Uh, this is. Um, this is an amazing, opulent picture book of Venice. Uh, this is this is a kind of part and parcel of what puts a book in this room, as opposed to just anywhere else here at Hyde Cottage. Is that in this room I have to love the book, I, and and really that is the yardstick that all of these things should be measured by. And I have this is a, a gigantic Venice coffee table picture book. And I've had all of those. I've looked at all of them at one point or another. Even the enormously expensive ones. I've had I've had um, Rizzoli's and whatnot send me the enormously expensive ones. Uh, I've gone through them all, and the reason why is because I know these properties. I know every street, every building, every every uh, parlor and attic in Venice. At one point or another, I have been almost everywhere in the city. Uh, so I love looking at these things because oftentimes I have stood where the photographer is standing. Uh, and, and this is called Inside Venice. Not going to be able to make it out very well with the Holy Nimbus of Light. But this is just a, a gigantic, uh, opulent picture book of the, the stately homes and apartments of Venice. And uh, a lot of the history involved as well. Tremendous fun. Tremendous fun to go through. Um, and that does it. That that finishes things. That finishes me as well. So that I don't know what if there'll be any more videos today. I'll give it a try. Uh, but that at least finishes this bookcase. So I am going to... I know it's Thursday. But I'm going to put uh, the library tour on hold until I can sit upright without being exhausted. So we're, it will continue. We will just keep going. But my original projection that this library tour of this little room would be done in October is clearly not going to be the case. <laughs> clearly not. Uh, I, so we'll, we'll just keep going. I, I'm, now I'm, I'm altering that projection to say that at least I think it will be done by the end of the year. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up for now. Uh, but I'll be back sometime. I, I don't know when. <laughs> as soon as I can. Thank you, Book 2.